I recreated Jose Marino's explosive tactic from 2011-2012 season with Real Madrid. The tactic was able to break the 100-point barrier in La Liga and is regarded as the most formidable Madrid side in the past decade. So how was Marino able to achieve this with the wealth of talent at his disposal? Like most Madrid sides, the team was strong in every department. Jose did start off imposing his team on the opposition but this led to Real conceding chances on the break as they did not counter press effectively high up the pitch. Jose Mourinho resulted to a slightly pragmatic approach that sacrificed the frontline press for a counter-attacking style of play. The team still pressed but they didn't force it like most of the modern teams do in you know like in modern football now. Jose adopted a 4-2-3-1 system for the most of his matches only reserving a 4-3-3 DM shape for games against the very best teams and in these games they were more defensive it was like a shutdown tactic. Huge credit to Football Made Simple for this tactical breakdown on Jose Mourinho's 2012 tactic you can give his channel a look in. He has amazing stuff on football philosophies, great content on all the tactical philosophies that elite managers use and all the managers use in modern football. Check out his content, you'll love it. By the way, also subscribe to the channel so you can get more football manager content like this. Now to the tactics. The goalkeeper Ike Casillas was probably one of the very best goalkeepers during his time. He played a vital role in how Real Madrid play out from the back. He was able to play short passes to the central defenders and also able to hit long balls over the top when the opportunity for the counter-attack was on. The fullbacks Marcelo and Abelo were played very differently. Marcelo was able to cover the left flank on his own and take advantage of the space vacated by a certain number 7. He had help from one of the two midfielders but we'll get to that soon. Abelo on the other hand was more reserved, played safe passes and rarely got forward. The central defenders followed a pattern I respect in football manager. Sergi Ramos was a powerful centre-back capable of carrying the ball into the midfield. His partner Pepe was a destroyer very capable of stopping opposition attackers albeit with controversial means sometimes and Pepe also had that defensive awareness to cover the space behind the defensive line. The midfield makes up the variation in how this tactic is built. You'd notice that I kept the back four consistent throughout all the tactics or throughout all the variations. A constant in the central midfield was Xabi Alonso's role. The deep line playmaker he had the ability to cover the wide area, to cover the wide left area sort of and helping Marcelo out to try and close the space when Marcelo was venturing too far forward but his primary duty was creating chances from deeper areas. He would receive the ball from Ike Casillas or Pepe or the defense and look to play through balls into the attacking players. Beside him was Sami Kadera and he was more of the pressing style type ball winning midfielder and a slightly more defensive defensive midfielder of the two. He was just responsible for defending. In the second variant of the system, Kedera had more freedom to operate like a box-to-box -box midfielder. He would get forward and also add to the numbers in the final third and sometimes drift slightly wider to try and support the right winger. The front four need no prior introduction. They were phenomenal, they were scary and they were very effective. Angel Di Maria, even though left-footed, played often on the right hand side stretching the weight of the pitch as a winger. He gave room for the prime creator in the side Mesut Ozil. Ozil was capable of drifting to the left and to the right of the mid of the attacking midfield zone linking up with other attackers and with Marcelo on the overlap. The towering presence in the attack was Cristiano Ronaldo. It was his yard, it was his stage, he was the big dog. Ronaldo essentially played as a striker out wide, something we call in football manager the inside forward. He would drift inside creating space for Marcelo to overlap and sometimes he'd be ready for the cutback from the Brazilian almost instantly and as he often did, Ronaldo would take relentless shots at goal, shots on target. More often than not, they went in the goal. So he was a problem for the opposition to deal with. In the center forward position, Karim Benzema and Gonzalo Higuain sacrificed a lot for this team. Both players were capable of drifting around the box, dropping deep and creating space for Ronaldo to exploit. They were very capable of creating chances on their own and finishing them off. This made it all the more difficult for the opposition to abandon them when they started to drop deep. As a team, the philosophy was not complicated. Close the space behind and hit the opposition with a lightning fast counter-attack. Madrid closed the space in front of, I think I should specify, Real Madrid closed the space in front of the goal by defending narrowly and forcing the opposition to wide areas. As mentioned earlier, they would press on occasion, but it wasn't mandatory to force a turnover. So in Football Manager, I noticed a standard press works better for this than a low block. The trigger press is more often but uh, you'd observe that this only happens when the opposition is in the middle of the pitch, somewhat the middle third region and not in their own territory. A perfect example is from this counter-attack from earlier, would win the ball 
in our defensive third and Vinicius is swift with this counter attack. Literally 2-5 to five seconds the ball is in the net. I tweaked the default set pieces a bit to encourage more counter attacks. You notice that I have two players up front from the defending corners and DLP is that's the midfielder on the left hand side is on the edge of the box to try and start that counter attack. In attack I didn't want to force the near post corner as I realized that the far post is just as good so I have a mixed crossing set up with one player on the near post, one player on the far post and one player inside the box. One player also charging the goalkeeper, that's relative. I'm still unbeaten with this tactic in the league, although heavily complacent in the Champions League, I need to take that seriously, honestly. But altogether, it's an exciting tactic to play with on Football Manager 2023. You'd notice I spoke little about the mentality. That's because my mindset towards mentality has changed completely as I started to play more and more Football Manager. I'll talk about this shift in another video, so do subscribe to the channel so you can get notified when that video does come out. For this tactic, I opted for an attacking mentality. Why? Madrid are an elite side and are favorite to win most of their games, so this makes it all more comfortable to go with an attacking mentality, as we're better than nine of the teams that we or nine out of ten times are better than the team that we're playing against. I could have gone for a positive mentality and in some phases of the game I do switch to positive but this is only to gain control of games. It's slower, more patient but that's not what this tactic aims to replicate so more often than not I'm using an attacking mentality. When we're 2-3 to three goals up and I want to slow the game down I switch to a positive mentality and make slight changes and control the game better. Is this tactic unbeatable? No. Is this tactic overpowered? No. It's just a way of playing that is effective in Football Manager 2023 and it's especially for Real Madrid. My schedule is tight these days as I am a student so I played a good amount of games in this test. With a hands-on approach I was able to recreate this tactic and play with or make it play the way that it should. So, so far so good we are unbeaten and we scored the most goals in the league. Here's a little something for you. I'm going to attach the tactic for download in the description down below and also the save file. So in case you want to play along the remainder of the season from this save, I'm going to attach the save file so you can download it for yourself and then finish up the season and see if you can go on to win the quadruple with Real Madrid. I don't think they've won the quadruple before, have they? Do they have a quadruple in Spain or it's just in the Premier League? Anyway, you can go on to finish up the season and see if you can win all competitions using this tactic. If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like on it. It, it helps support the channel a lot. I really appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching and staying up until this point. Also subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager videos and Football Manager content. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.